Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It is Akafalos here, and today we are going to be continuing our playthrough of Ring King. So, as usual, if you guys are going to enjoy it, consider liking this video as well as subscribing. I really do appreciate your support here, but most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of single player playthroughs or content just like this one. And with that being said, let's get this episode started. So, here we are in the game, and as you can see, we are here on the Shadow Isles. Um, we are just here uh, to basically carry on with the quest that we've been doing, the side quest, um, Abigail's Legacy, which essentially is just um, the uh, mean to go ahead and craft misfortune's legendary weapon so we've already acquired the other two um, crafting components which is i believe a blueprint um, that was acquired in the last episode of course there were five torn pieces of the abigail blueprint um, are scattered throughout Beachwater. and um, in the last episode i showed you where to get them and uh, where are the precise locations of getting them now we've also acquired the second component which is the gunpowder worthy of abigail's craftsmanship this was a very simple uh, acquisition um, all we had to do was we just had to go to the arcane forge and and um, essentially read all the manuscript pieces inside there. You probably would have already gotten it um, on your first visit to the Arcane Forge because um, obviously I suspect you would have read all the manuscript pieces in that particular area. So we've already acquired both those pieces and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to go ahead and grab the third and final piece which is the suitable volcanic gun barrels. Now this is a fairly confusing quest in my opinion. Um, basically it will involve a lot of problem solving and a lot of brainstorming. Um, I have a cheat sheet for you guys essentially it's not really a cheat sheet it's basically just a guide which i essentially um sourced out from on uh, you know from online websites and basically what i've done is i've compiled it in a pdf uh, together with the other um champion legendary items as well as the level 3 ultimates it's basically how to unlock um those abilities as well as those items so um we're going to be using that uh, particular guide that I have compiled. It should be, the link to the guide should be in the description or in the comment section down below. It's a free media file link, so you guys could just go ahead and knock yourself out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, basically, we're going to refer to that guide as we do this quest here today and uh, the first thing we need to do is of course we need to head to the corresponding area so we are here in the drone port and the corresponding area is gonna be the twisted paths for those of you who are wondering where is the twisted paths this is only unlocked after you um, unlock the arcane forge and after you interact with misfortune's um, lectern the you know the lectern that possesses the uh, crafting recipe for abigail's um, legacy so yeah, after you interact with that particular lectern in the arcane forge only then you're going to be able to unlock the twisted path so i have already unlocked the twisted paths let's go ahead and head to that location okay guys so here we are we are in the twisted paths um so basically before we head into the uh this dungeon there is three things um a couple of things that i would like to point out first so first things first you don't have to worry about any enemies in this particular dungeon that is because there is basically virtually no enemies in this entire area um until the final chamber how do i know this that is because i did a um personal playthrough where i tested the um the workingness the workability i'm not really sure what's the effectiveness there we go the effectiveness and the usefulness of the guide that i've compiled and i'm pleased to say that it is very very you know it's very it's uh, very very useful 100 works and uh, that's how i know um you know there are no enemies in this particular area so that's the number one thing that you need to know now secondly the another thing that you need to know is that um i believe uh, you should be, you know, well equipped with this knowledge already. Um, you need to know your four basic cardinal directions. Cardinal directions in this sense is basically just a fancy term for compass directions. So um, you need to know your north, south, east and west. I think you guys know north on top, south down, east is to your right and the west is to the left. However, um, this comes to the third point. So um, in this particular game, in this particular, um, you know, area, you have to look at it from the character's perspective. So essentially you need to... Um, tilt the entire compass by about 45 degrees and that way it's everything you know it's gonna be diagonal a bit so um, basically what I mean by character's perspective is uh, let's take for example misfortune here um, you have to look at it from this particular angle so diagonally and she's looking towards this side so this is her north south is behind her east is um, to her right and west is to her left so basically um, a very easy way to remember in terms of uh, from your perspective as a player um, i have compiled this in my guide so you know i'm just gonna put it on your screen as well the uh, what is it the, uh, the the tips that i have for you so basically all you need to remember is uh, from your perspective north is to your right west is upwards 
east is down east is downwards and south is to your left so basically you know um it's it's a bit it's a bit um skewed it's a bit uh, distorted now um with that in mind i'm also going to pull up a screenshot of the uh, sequence uh, of the cardinal directions that you need to follow here in order to navigate the twisted paths that is because if i pull up the map you'll notice that the twisted paths is essentially a maze denoted by this silhouette here nan uh and one more thing that you need to know um this fourth thing i should add i forgot to mention this lucky i remembered um heading south is gonna bring you uh, it's gonna reset you um back to this particular starting location how do i know this if you just go ahead and interact with this particular book over here in this manuscript um south will always return you to the beginning so basically all you need to concern yourself if you're following this guide um all you need to concern yourself with are you know are the north um are the directions which is north um, east as well as west it's a bit confusing but i'm just gonna put up the uh, media on your screen so that you can take a screenshot and you can process it on your own time uh, however we don't have the luxury of time so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna follow my guide that i have written and uh, essentially i'm gonna show you uh, visually how to navigate this place so um, following my guide that i have um, basically what we need to do is we need to head north twice and then west twice again so let's go ahead and do that let's head north again north is to your right west is to your um towards the uh, uh towards the top direction now that i think about it i think i probably should rephrase this um in a better way maybe north should be your um top right west should be your top left south is your uh, bottom left and your east is your bottom right so i think i'm going to rephrase it in the guide but uh, let's just follow the directions based on the character's perspective so um north twice let's go ahead and head north um, you can also interact with these uh, fountains if you want to but i'm not going to do it because i already know um, what these directions are so yeah north um, west east and south so yeah let's go ahead and proceed north twice this is gonna be one okay we can loot the urns here if you want to again don't head south unless you want to reset your position so unless you screw up the sequence uh do not think about heading south okay so the fireflies are always lost let's forget that that's just an important piece uh we have to head we've already headed up north once let's head up north again okay so there is a chest towards this area if you want to go ahead and grab the chest go ahead but i'm not going to do it because i don't want to reset my position when i come back so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to head west okay you will reach a fountain here uh the orange sun sets over the water we have another urn let's uh, check out what this fountain does water flows freely from an unknown source in this fountain okay so um an on-screen counter should be on your screen as well to show you what are the directions going that way you know you're not um you're not lost um so basically we've headed west once we're gonna head west again okay as you can see we have a chest here let's go ahead and grab the chest now here is where it gets a little bit tricky okay so if you've been fall if you follow my guide i'm gonna pull up the screenshot again so that you guys have a clearer picture you'll notice that i say after the second west we have to head back east so basically what this means is you know in theory it should cancel out um the progress that i made so basically we didn't need to head west um a second time into this particular chamber however this is where um i highly recommend that you know i'm still a bit confused on this part about you know myself personally but my recommendation is you know do not you know just do not fight the uh, uh do not fight or contemplate the uh what is it the uh the, the instructions that has been given just follow it and you should be able to get where you want you know where you want to so uh, we've already headed west twice and the next uh, the next direction is to head back east so let's go ahead and head back east and see where this takes us okay so as you can see we, when we head back east it brings us to a different area entirely so this is why i say do not fight the guy just follow it to the letter and you should get where you want okay so coming back east the next thing we need to do is we need to head up north so this way all right there's only one direction here let's head east we have a manuscript piece here let's read this fireflies are always lost oh yeah this looks like the same area that we've had to before but let's go ahead and head north all right and as you can see this is a different area so um to my understanding if you head it down this way there will be a chest over here if you want to go ahead and grab the chest go ahead and grab the chest but when you want to head back you have to head south and it's going to reset the sequence and you have to restart again however because i'm not interested in chess we are just going to go ahead and carry on with the dungeon so the next sequence is to head west 
All right, we are back in this fountain again. But what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out this direction. We are going to head east one more time. And as you can see, we are in a different area with a different fountain. Okay, let's go ahead and interact with this. Water flows freely from an unknown source in this fountain. Cool. All right, so let's not fuck up the this, this, this sequence. Let's continue with north. And you'll see that we are in a different area with a broken fountain. The dry river bed was in otherwise verdant forest. Okay, we can interact with this fountain as well. The fountain is dry. All right, so the next order is to head west. Let's go ahead and head towards this side. All right, we have a chest at the end. Let's go ahead and quickly grab this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to head east three times. So let's go ahead and just head towards this way three times. So once. Back to the fountain. It's okay. One more time. Two. Another dry fountain. Let's ignore it. Um, it should be the same thing, the same text. The fountain is dry. Okay, let's head east for the third and final time. Okay, so we are here in this particular, um, what is it, room with the chest. Let's go ahead and grab it. Now we have to head west again. So let's go ahead and head back. Alright, and we're going to be able to head north now. And as you can see, we are in another room with another fountain. Let's go ahead and head uh, west again as the sequence. Another dry fountain. Let's go ahead and backtrack and follow the sequence. We're going to head east one more time. So essentially cancelling out this direction. Okay. It is telling me we have to go west again. So let's follow it. Again, it looks rather ridiculous because we are just um, following the... Uh, what is it? The... Um, how do I say it? A, a, a sequence that basically cancel out, cancels out each other. But um, trust me, just follow it and you'll get where you need to go. So what we need to do is we need to head east one more time. Again, I know it looks ridiculous, but just follow the sequence and you'll get where you need to be. Okay, so now we're going to head north. All right, and there we go. So this is where we need to be, which is, of course, the final chamber. So um, for those of you who are following the guide, success is basically denoted by this teleporter pad here, as well as this um, this door that uh, you should be able to unlock at this stage, you know, having completed Thresh's dungeon where you got the Crimson Amulet. So let's go ahead and interact with this particular um, door and you should be able, um, and we should be able to head into the next area. Use the amulet to remove the ward. Okay, let's head through. Alright, so this will bring us to another puzzle. We are not done with the problem solving here. So, uh, this is a very interesting one and this will require a little bit of, um, you know, a very good deduction. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just go ahead and interact with the two statues here just to give you an idea of what to expect. So, the first statue here, the first uh, humanoid statue will say each time you fail the trial, the solution will change. Okay? Um, the second statue here, one of the statues always lies, two of the statues always tells the truth. Alright, so let's go ahead and head into this next area. Um, so first things first that you'll want to note is that there are three um, dog statues, if you will. I'm not really sure what you call these, I'm just going to go with dog. Um, but yeah, basically these three statues are what these two, um, hum these two humanoid statues are referring to. So basically, out of these three, two of them are telling the truth, one of them is lying. Just to recap uh, what it says again, just to be sure. Yeah, one of them always lies, two of the statues always tells the truth. Alright, so that is one thing to note. Now. Uh, one thing to say is that, uh, you know, the uh, if you guys fail this particular segment, do not worry. That is because all you, what we are, I'm just going to tell you in advance what, 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 what you're going to do. So when you get the solution from these three statues here, all you're going to do is you're just going to head through the doors in a particular order um, given by those statues. Now, if you fail that particular order, do not worry. What's going to happen is that you're just going to have to restart um, this particular puzzle. You're not going to be sent back to the beginning of the dungeon. You don't have to navigate the maze again. You're just going to have to continue where you are from this particular location but um, per se if you are you know not that comfortable and you still want to make a save go ahead and do it no harm done but uh, basically you're not gonna have to restart uh, from the beginning that's my point okay so 
let's go ahead and just quickly read through what each of these um, particular uh, these three uh, what uh, statues have to say to us so to my understanding in this particular location um, there is a there is no set and predetermined solution to this that is because the essentially each statement that these uh, three uh, three statues are gonna give are gonna reset each time you fail um, as per the sage um, earlier says and if I'm not mistaken that you know whoever is lying is also gonna reset um, I'm not really sure sure about this i haven't really tested it out you know as uh, you know as uh, um, as many times as i would have liked but to my understanding out of the 10 times i've tried i think um, they've always reset you know who is lying and who is uh, telling the truth so um without further ado let's just go ahead and take a look and see at what set of statements i have and per se if you're having a little bit of trouble in this area and you have the same statements like mine you can just follow the solution if uh, you know if i get it right so basically um you know i'm gonna try to help you with um these the solution um for this particular set of statements that I'm about to receive. Okay, let's go ahead and check in with this first statue here first. Written at the base of the door of the statue name is Anekyo. A disembodied voice enters your mind and whispers, Kadenskar tells only the truth. Enter the northwest door last. Okay, so Anekyo is telling us to enter the northwest door last and he also tells us that Kadenskar is telling the truth. Okay, let's go and check out the second statue. Written at the base of the statue is the name Belefros. A disembodied voice enters your mind and whispers, Belefros tells only the truth. Enter the southwest door last. Okay, Be so Belefros himself claims Belefros tells he, he, that he's telling the truth. And uh, he tells us to enter the southwest door last, which basically conflicts with uh, Kadenskar telling us to enter the northwest door last. Alright. Um, sorry, Anekyo telling us uh, to enter the northwest door last. Okay, let's check out this final one, which I presume is Kadenskar. Written at the base of the statue is the name Kardenskar. A disembodied voice enters your mind and whispers, Anekyo tells only the truth. Enter the west door last. Alright, so looks like Kardenskar claims Anekyo is telling the truth, and Anekyo claims Kardenskar is telling the truth, while, um, you know, Belev Belevros here claims he himself is telling the truth. So this is very, very interesting because we do not know who to follow here. Um, okay, let's go ahead and use a little bit of logic deduction uh, because again, like I said, these solutions are gonna re you know these statements are gonna reset each time um, you get a um, you know you get a different set of solution. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a I'm just gonna go ahead and try to solve this one for you. If not, we'll go ahead and attempt a different um, set. Okay, so Kadenskar here says that Anakyo tells only the truth and he's telling us to enter the West Door twice, right? Um, Anekyo here is telling us to enter the northwest door last, and Kadenskar um, also tells only the truth. Okay, so taking that into consideration, Anekyo is vouching for Kadenskar. We're just gonna go with A, B, and C. So A says C is telling the truth, and C also says A is telling the truth. Now B is the only one, you know, um, saying that he himself is telling the truth. And going off what we know from the statue earlier, which said that only two statues are telling the truth. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that A and C are telling the truth and we have to enter the northwest door last and at the same time we have to enter the west door twice. Okay, with that in mind, what we're gonna go and what we're gonna go and do is we're gonna go ahead and give it a try. So we enter the west door we enter the westmost door twice and we enter the northwest door last. Okay, so let's go ahead and head into this particular area and see um, what is the direction we need to go with. Um, so if we check out this compass again, it's gonna tell us this is east as expected. So the same cardinal directions apply. This is north, this is west, this is east, this is south. So we need to enter the west door twice and then the north um, west door last, right? According to the sequence. Okay, let's go ahead and enter the west door twice. Okay. So another thing to note is how we know that, you know, if something works is that the torch here will light up and essentially, you know, you get to carry on. If you have uh, essentially failed the test, you are going to have to restart back at that particular puzzle area, the uh, the three dogs area. And uh, basically, they're going to give you a new set of statement. Okay, so west door twice. Let's go ahead and head west one more time. Okay. So we're halfway there because we've already unlocked this second um, this second torch. Now northwest door last. So this is north, this is west, this is the northwest. Let's head in here. 
and there we go so we are in the final chamber now this is where we are going to encounter another enemy which i believe is going to be a fairly fairly tough um, battle in itself um level 25 we have the four level advantage so we should be fine um, I'm going to go ahead and take on the battle. We should be able to uh, win it here real quick. I understand we're running out of time, but let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and just kill him. Uh, we're going to do go misfortune and shoot him. Unfortunately not. <laughs> we never stop. Okay, so we're taking on the torture orb here, which is the uh, final and sole enemy in this entire Twisted Paths dungeon. So before we do anything, let's just quickly check in and see what it does first. I've actually taken on this battle, um, I think four or five times, and I uh, you know mainly because. Okay, thank you, Alawi, for the uh, for telling for reminding us what we already know. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I've taken on this enemy. Uh, I think about four or five times before um, this episode, mainly just to go ahead and you know, uh, like I said, I was just testing the work of the effectiveness of the guide, and uh, it works. So in the end, I thought you know what, might as well take on the final enemy just to see what it does. So anyway, um, the torture up. There is one thing you need to know here. Um, let me just go ahead and uh, read through its abilities first before I tell you what it is. Penitential gaze applies focus gaze during all single target attacks. The target champion but turns break spirit does moderate magic damage and stuns a champion does not apply stun immune to target okay collective punishment does moderate magic damage and stuns each champion does not apply stun immune um it is also immune to stuns itself and it has just applied focus gaze focusing all single target attacks on the champion on the champion afflicted with focus gaze which is misfortune now this is what i want to talk about so i am not really certain what the focus gaze actually does that is because going off the statement that has been provided here um let me just reread it again applies focus gaze drawing all single target attacks to target champion for three turns to my understanding this means all single target attacks right so it doesn't matter if it's from the torture op or you know if it's from the uh you know our own champion so um, I was led to believe initially that uh, whatever single target abilities that we do from each champion here will also, um, you know, be susceptible to the uh, focus gaze and essentially it's going to direct the damage back to the uh, champion that it has, uh, you know, targeted. However, this is not the case. So what I've done is I've actually gave it a try. Uh, I have done single target attacks in the couple of reruns earlier, a um, couple of runs earlier, and essentially it does not do as the statement implies. So I think it's just a basic taunt which uh, forces the, you know, uh, any attack that the NPC does, uh, in our case the enemy, the torture op, it forces the torture op to only attack the target um, that it has targeted. So um, again, like I said, I'm not really sure precisely what it does. So if those of you out there who are playing this level or have already played this level understand the second segment um do let me know what it does in the comment section down below i would really really appreciate um some help clearing it up but regardless we are just going to take him on here so what i'm going to do is since we open with alawi let's go ahead and do a tentacle smash all right it is such a shame that we are susceptible to damage here so what i'm going to do is because the torture op can do some good amount of damage like the modric magic uh the break spirit here moderate magic damage as well as the collective punishment uh, what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to do a fancy footwork we will reduce damage taken on misfortune and at the same time increase evasion so that way she won't take damage <laughs> All right, with Pike here, let's do a carve. Okay, we will do another tentacle smash here. Let's do the same thing with Misfortune. Let's get another stack of strut. We will do more fancy footworks. chances of evading the attack goes up we're just gonna want to try to see out the uh what is it the um penitential the focus gaze thing here so that way we won't uh, take damage okay let's go ahead and do another carve wow all three hits were critical we get ignite and poison as well that was wonderful all 
all right here let's go ahead and do a harsh lesson we will do balance and what we can do here is i think we're gonna do a marked target we can do a bone skill but we don't have bleed on the torture op yet so i think we're gonna do a marked target just to see if we could get a sunder and maybe we could get a bleed that you know that way we could do the bone skewer in future Are you Okay, it's cool. Sunder, mark, sunder, and marked. It's fine. Um, not the greatest, but it's still okay because a carve will make sure he takes more damage. Alright, he's probably targeting misfortune again, so we're gonna do another fancy footwork. Okay, so what I'm going to do here with Pike is since we have the ultimate ready, we're going to do it to the depths. Again, another tentacle smash just to build up some bonus charge. We're not gonna use mana for this battle. Um, that way, we could, you know, essentially conserve it and get the bonus XP. Okay, uh, let's do another mark target. See what we get. Maybe a more, maybe more sunders. No, okay, um, it's alright. Uh, we did not get a Sunder there. Very interesting. Um, it's okay. Uh, at least we can do a Carve, and I think we should still get some good damage here. Unfortunately, we only enter stealth after that. <laughs> um, it would have been better if we got it before, but it's alright. It's alright. We're cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to do a Harsh Lesson. We're going to go Balance and see if we could uh, take him out. And with Misfortune, this is the final turn, I believe, where she is susceptible to Focus Gaze. So just to see it out, we're going to do another fancy footwork. I might just try to, you know, play for a full health finish. So maybe what I'll do is I'll see if I could, uh, you know, play a bit shakily, uh, you know, play a bit loose and basically just, um, you know, get and a couple extra turns in. That way we could have Alawi do a Grace of Negagaboros and uh, possibly bring Misfortune back up to speed. So with that in mind, uh, let's do another carve here. Never does. Let's see who he targets. <laughs> Okay, he targets everyone. Collective punishment. Alright, um, in that sense... Okay, I tell you what, you know what, let's not play for a full health, uh, full health finish. Um, and, you know, I think we should still get like, some good good amount of XP. Uh, let me just go ahead and try to kill him. We'll do a tentacle smash here. Or oh, actually, I might have screwed that one up. Um, I think Alawi has an ultimate that actually heals up everyone. Um, okay, you know what? It's okay, it's okay. We still win here. Uh, let me just do a carve and just kill him. It's alright. Um, we, do, we don't get the full health finish, but uh, it should still be a good amount of XP. We are well. Okay, 120 XP. Not bad. Uh, 700 gold and 23, uh, what is this, gazing orb. Okay, I think this might be for Ala, uh, for Ari. Okay, it's alright, we'll check that out later. Okay, so that's about it. So that is the only and final enemy done in the uh, entirety of the Twisted Pass. So to get the volcanic gun barrels, all we have to do is we just have to loot this big chest over here.
What are... Are these tubes? They smell like sulfur, like a volcano. I haven't seen anything like it before. Tubes? Sulfur? Let me see those. In the frail yard, the smiths have created amazing metals from volcanic rock. These are almost perfect. Yeah, these could work. Could work. For what? What are you going to do with... I see. Weapons. Guns. Of course. That's right. Guns. More specifically, gun barrels. Okay, so that's about it. So as you can see, we've acquired the volcanic gun barrels alongside something called a Vestian field, gu field Guide and uh, something about uh, Ring of the Fox or something. So, um, I suppose those are for RE, but uh, that's not important. We'll check that out some other time. What's most important is, like I said, we have acquired the final crafting component to craft Abigail's Legacy. So all that's left to do is to return to the Forge and Treasure Dungeon and craft the, uh, you know, the weapon in question. However, we're not going to do that just yet. That is because there is one more champion that we are going to take a look at before we progress with the storyline uh that's also because the other two champions that you know uh you know they're, uh, they're crafting components that are for the other two champions legendary weapons they actually require us to progress deeper in the storyline first so yeah we'll take a look at those two later but the next one we're gonna do in the next episode is gonna be alawi's um level three uh sorry not level three legendary quest here so for the heart of the goddess so i'm gonna show you how to grab the essence of the serpent i actually have the essence of the serpent but there's one more step that we need to do in order to actually attain it so i will show, the, show it to you in the next episode and uh, i also show you the relic which uh, protects life and guides it forward how to acquire it also in the next episode or either one first we'll see you know which one um you know uh, is more convenient for me and at the same time i also talked a little bit about acquiring the uh, trap the item trapped in the past a, me a memory artificially kept alive um i have acquired this relatively early on i'll talk about it a little bit in the next episode so yeah um but um yeah that's uh, for a later date but for now uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode episode of Rune King and if you found this particular guide on getting the volcanic gun barrels helpful, um, the entirety of Twisted Path, this, this guide on the entirety of Twisted Path helpful, uh, do consider leaving a like as well as hitting that big red sub button down below. I really do appreciate your support here but most importantly it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of single player playthroughs or content just like this one. And with that being said, this is Kevlo signing off. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for joining me. Hopefully I catch you all in the next episode. Goodbye.